All right, so I'm going to do a number of examples right now. So I'll split it up into a few different parts. And what I want to do is I want to build a form and then I want to do CSS a number of ways. So at the very bottom of the notes for this week, I've got a couple of examples. So I have a form that I'm going to build and it looks like this by default. In other words, it looks like garbage if you don't do anything with CSS. And then what we're going to do is we'll try doing it with CSS a couple of ways. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'll do some of my own styling. And then I'll show you how to use Bootstrap, which is a really popular CSS framework for building responsive websites. And I think you know, you'll get a sense of how you could do this with a number of different tools. So what I have here is I have this web page that you can see in my editor loaded up on the left hand side and I'm going to work toward building this form. So we're, what we're essentially doing here is we're building a form where uh, a company could have a way for its users to submit feedback and say I'm having some kind of a problem. I'll just show you the form again. This is my username. This is my full name. This is my email address. This is the date. I'm, I'm having a particular problem. Here's the description of my problem. I want to be able to upload a screenshot and I want to be able to submit that. So we want to build out this, um, you know, feedback form really. Okay. So what we need to do is we need to start off and we need to create a form. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to make a form and I'm going to specify two things. Remember we have to put in an action and the action is where this is going to get submitted. So let's imagine that at our company on the web server, this will need to get submitted to a, an HTTP route called slash feedback. And then we have to specify a method. If we don't do anything, it's going to assume that we want to do a get method. However, I'm going to use post because the form is going to include a lot of data. So if, if the user uploads a screenshot, that's going to have a lot of data in it and it's going to be too big for us to uh, submit that way. So I have my form, my form is created. Okay, so what I'm going to do for each one of these different uh, parts of my form is I'm going to create a control and I'm also going to create a label. So I'm always going to create labels partly because I want to increase the clickable region for each one of these. So if I click on the text box beside username, it works. But if I click on the word username, it also works. And especially when you're on a mobile device, you want to increase the clickable region for the user. You want to make it really easy to pair these two things together. So the way that we do that, I'm going to make a label and I'm going to specify that this label is going to be for a control whose ID is feedback user. And the text of my label is going to be username like so. So when I say for, whatever I put in here, this has to match up with an ID of a, of a control. So that's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to make an input control. And my input control, I'm going to specify that the ID of the input control is equal to feedback user, like so. And I'm going to say that I need to specify that the name of this is going to be username. So remember when we were talking about making our form controls, it's going to be common for us to put an ID and also a name. The name is what's going to get submitted. So when you submit this form, this is where the data, this is how it's going to be labeled in the form submission. But the ID is meant for doing CSS, JavaScript, and for things like this, where I want to, I want to connect these two elements, the label and the input element. Uh, let's set up that this is going to be type equals text, because I want the user to be able to just type any kind of free form text. Let's just start with that. So I'll close my input element, I'll save this, and I get a username and a place to put the username. If I click on username, it automatically uh, takes me in there. Now if I, if I load this page, you'll notice that my cursor is not currently focused on this element in my page. So let's fix that. I'm going to specify that I want to autofocus this control. So when I save this and when the page loads, you'll notice that I'm automatically I have um, my index is there. Uh, my, sorry, my cursor is there. Okay, so that's pretty good. What else could we do in here? Well, another thing we could do to help our user is we could give a hint to the browser and we could say that this is a place where we expect to put a username. 
So the way you do this is you say to the, you say that you want to turn on autocomplete. And if the browser supports it and if the user wants it, what will happen here is the the browser will give you the ability to autocomplete different types of information. And you can see in Visual Studio Code all of these names come up. Now these names come from the HTML5 standard. So when you do autocomplete, you can specify this is an email, this is a family name, this is a given name, all of these different things you can see as they, all, they're all coming up here, passwords, names, etc. Somewhere down at the bottom here will be username. So I'm going to say to the browser, this field is the user's username. So if you know the user's username, you could put it here, you could autocomplete it for me. So that's something we could do to help out. What else could we do for the user? We could specify, uh, let's say that in our database, let's say that all of our usernames are 25 characters in length. So maybe we have a database in the back end, a SQL server or something, and we're going to specify, all right, uh, that table, the username is 25 characters in length. If that's the case, there's no point in allowing the user to enter 5,000 characters here. So we could say, that the max length is going to be equal to 25 characters. So we save this and now we have a field, the user can type in 25 characters of data and so on. Now one note, I saw a tweet recently, um, when, you're, when you're specifying your, uh, your fields like this and you're doing something like max length, you have to be really careful. So this was a, a, a situation where Visa, specified that their password max length was 32. So what that's going to mean is that nobody's going to be able to enter in a password that's longer than 32 characters. However, if you use password managers, they often generate really long passwords. So what happened in this situation is the password got created for, let's say, 64 characters in length, but the field will only let you enter the first 32 characters of it. And so now it's not possible to log in so you have to be really careful. This this situation here, um, you know, you might say, well, you only need 25 characters. You got to make sure that this matches up with your data. If you're not sure, don't do it, right? Don't put arbitrary limits on this if you don't need to. Okay, so the last thing I'm going to do, I, I said autofocus, but I really want my form, I want to make it possible so the user can use keyboard navigation to jump from one control to the next control. So you can press the tab key and move around. To do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to specify the tab index for each one of my controls. And I'm going to say that this is the first in the sequence. This is the one that I want to begin with. All right, so that's our username. Let's do the full name, same idea, label. And the label is going to be for feedback, full name. The text will be full name. Again, we're going to have an input element and I'm going to set the ID equal to feedback full name so that it matches with my label. I'm going to set the name equal to name and I'm going to set autocomplete equal to and I'm also going to use name. Okay. So it seems kind of funny because you end up with so many things that all have the same name, but they have different purposes. So make sure you don't skip any of those. I'm going to specify that the type of this is text. I want the user to be able to enter in any text that they want. And I'm going to say that the tab index is two. Now I'm not going to put a length on this because I don't know how long your name is. Um, I know people that have really long names. I know people that have four different names, right? So they might have um, like, two names, like one space in between or two spaces, like th there's all different things that can happen. So you want to be really careful here that you don't limit if you don't need to. So tab index equals two and save that. Okay, so now I have my username, I have my full name. Again, we're not worrying about how it looks at this point. We're just trying to get the overall structure of it in place. Third thing that I want, I want an email. Okay, so we do label for feedback email. This is the person's email address. We have an input element. ID equals feedback email. Name equals email. Autocomplete 
you guessed it, email. Now, instead of type equals text, which would work, I have a more specific type here. I have an email type. So I'm going to ask that it give me email as the type because I want the browser to give me some help. When the user enters something, I want only valid email addresses to be something that gets submitted. So next week we're going to be talking about how to do form validation and make sure that the data that the user puts in is what we want. For now, the best thing you can do is you can use the most appropriate type for the data that you're entering. Text is fine if you want the user to enter something that could be anything, but if it can't be anything, if it has a specific format, you want to be a bit more careful with it. Okay, so what else do we need to do? We have to set our tab index equal to three. Let me show you this tab index working. So if I save this, so when I uh, come into my page, I click here, and this one automatically has focus, the first one. If I press the tab key, it goes to full name. If I press e tab key again, it goes to email. So it goes one, two, three. So you want to try and design for all different modalities. If somebody has a keyboard, make it easy to enter text with a keyboard. Anybody who's filling out a form most likely is using a keyboard. Now they might be on a mobile device and a mobile device doesn't have the same uh, ability to jump around. However, mobile devices will use tab index in a different way to be able to try and anticipate how to jump from one field to the next when you get done entering something. Okay, so we've got the email. So the next thing we need is we want to know what the date is for them submitting this problem. Another label. And the label here is going to be for feedback date. Another input element. ID equals feedback date. Name equals date. Type equals, now again, I could put text, but that's not what I want. I have all these other types I can use in here, right? So what I want to do is I want to put in a date type. I want the user to be able to enter this date using a calendar control. I don't want them to have to type it in manually. So the browser is going to give them the ability to like select it visually, use a date picker, which I'll show you in a second. I'm going to do tab index equals four and let's save that. So here's what I have now. I have a text, a text, an email, and then I have a date. And when I click on the date, you can see that I get this nice visual date picker. So when the user picks something, it's going to fill in the date for them. What's nice about this is they're not going to get the format wrong. They're not going to get the month and the day reversed. They're not going to have any of the problems you can have when you're entering data uh, manually, if you're doing it just as a bunch of text. Okay, what's next? Okay, now I want them to be able to enter in a category and say like, I'm having trouble with the network or I'm having trouble with your website or whatever it might be. So let's do another label. So this is the problem that they're having. And I'm gonna say that I have another input element ID equals feedback problem. The name of this equals problem. And I'm going to give them a clue. So let's, let's, let's just do this and I'll, I'll set the tab index and then show you tab index equals uh, five. Okay, so here's our problem right here. Now, what I'm aiming for here is I want people to be able to say, okay, this was this was user interface, network, documentation, whatever. I have a I have a couple of categories, and I want the user to enter it. So imagine what people are going to do. So if I give them, they're going to do things uh, like this. Some, some one person is going to say network. The next person is going to say network problem, uh, network, and they're going to spell it wrong. Um, et cetera, et cetera. So what's going to happen in my database is I'm going to have all these different variations of the data, which is going to be annoying and it's going to make it hard for me to do queries if I want to try and group things together. So what I'm going to do 
is I'm going to try and help the user out. Instead of having them type in arbitrary text, which is what it's doing right now, I'm going to give them a list of possible options. Okay, so let's do that. So I'm going to define a data list. ID equals feedback problems with an S. And inside here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to specify a bunch of options. Value equals network. Value equals uh, user interface. Value equals documentation. Uh, website and the one that everybody is going to want you to give them. Other. Okay, so I have a data list. Now, what I want to do is I want to connect this list of options. I want to put this list of options into this input box. So essentially what I want to do is I want to do autocomplete. So when they start typing, I want to give them the I want to give them the string the way that I want them to enter it. So I'm going to give them some help. So over here inside my input, I'm going to specify that I have a list and the list is equal to feedback problems. So I'm going to connect this data list by its ID to this input component here this list if you save this so now what I have here is if I start typing here and you can see it automatically does completion for me so it found the letter N and it says okay well here's N N N all of these have an N in it and I say oh network that's what I want so I click on network and it auto fills it for me so this is nice because the user can enter something else they can do this, like I'm still going to allow them to do that, but I'm going to give them some help. So as soon as they start typing, you know, this is a problem with your website, they can go here and say, I'm going to select website. That's exactly what I want. Okay, we've got the tab index. That's good. Okay, now I want to give the user a way to enter in a large amount of freeform text. So, um, Here's a big description of the problem that I'm having, five or six sentences that they're going to they're gonna type out. So to do this, I can't use, well, I could. I could say input type equals text. I could do this. But the problem is it won't support line breaks. So the user can't see, a, like they can keep typing off to the right, but it, like imagine if I'm here and I start typing something really long, like it's just going to scroll and you can't read it back. You can't see what you wrote. It's not a good experience. So the, the text type is not meant for long pieces of text. What I need instead is I need an area to put text in. Like I, I just need this large component that can hold it. So I'm going to use a text area. So a text area, I'm going to define a few things with my text area. What I'm going to say is I'm going to say that the ID for this is equal to feedback message. I'm going to say that the name of this in my form is message. I'm going to specify that I want to see 10 rows vertically. So I want, I want to have enough room that you could see 10 different lines of text. The tab index of this is going to be 6. And I'm also going to put in some placeholder text. So I, 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 um, I should do that here too, I forgot. So placeholder here. Um, or that's, you know what, this isn't a good placeholder. Let's, let's see if we can do better. So I want them to enter in the type of problem. Um, so that I can help them. Now down here for the placeholder, I want to do something like, uh, let's see, placeholder is equal to, um, something like that. Okay. Um, actually, no, I'm not going to do placeholder on a text area. I can't do placeholder on a text area. 
Uh, okay, so what's left? Actually, am I right on this? Let's look this up. Self, whether or not, except uh, it does accept a placeholder, so I'm wrong. You can put one on here, so let's do that. So I'm going to say text area placeholder equals tell us about your problem. Save that. Okay. So let's, yeah, okay. What is this problem related to here? I think I have a styling issue. The text is just showing up with the wrong color. Let's just confirm. Like it's so light that it can't be seen. So that's hilarious. Again, I'm going to fix this with CSS. Okay, so what's left for us to do on this? Uh, I want a place where the user can upload a file. So I need another kind of, uh, I, need a, I need a label. Label for uh, feedback file. And I, I'm going to say that if they want to upload a screenshot, this is where they want to send me a screenshot. I'm going to say I have an input element. The ID of the input element is equal to uh, feedback file. So it matches with my label. The type of control is a file control. I want them to be able to upload a file. I want the name of it to be equal to file the tab index to be the next in order, which is seven. And the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to specify all of the file types that I'm willing to accept. So I'm going to say that when someone goes to upload a file, I'm going to accept an image, which is a PNG, and I'm going to accept an image, which is a JPEG. <clears throat> so they have to upload one of these two images. what the user could put in there, you would specify this. Okay, the last thing I need to do is I need a couple of buttons. So I'm going to put in a input type equals a submit button. Name equals submit. Value equals submit. And tab index equals 8. And let's see. So now I have good place for my, here's my submit button. I'm going to do the same thing for one more button. And this button is going to be, instead of submitting the form, I'm going to have um, a, a button that will reset the form. So if the user wants to clear all the data in here, they can. And change this to nine. Perfect. Okay, so here's our very ugly, unusable web form, but we have all the pieces in place that we need to be able to use it. So I'm going to pause here. In the next video, I'm going to take this and I'm going to do styling. So we'll see you in a minute.